He's John Barry of the famous Barry Brothers, Barry family, ESPN analyst who uh, joins us on the show. John, I think the Clippers were the only team you didn't play for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Brent, Brent took care of that. So, uh, great to be on with you, Dan, but really to be on with the Danettes is uh, a, a true – Wow. I mean, all the guys, this is incredible for me. It really is a big day. Well, I'm glad to have you on. Uh, you know what? I, I kind of stumbled through the first segment because of Dr. Jack Ramsey yeah. dying, and then I got Donald Sterling that's getting all of this attention, and uh, you know, kind of bummed me out because of that, that Jack Ramsey, one of the great, great voices, people in this game, mm -hmm. won't, won't get his day that we're talking about Donald Sterling. Uh, if you look at the weekend, when this story started, did, where did you think we were going to end up over the weekend and certainly today with Donald Sterling? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like what Adam Silver is doing. Give him his due process until we truly know it's him. Uh, let's not jump to any conclusions or, or, or sanctions or what have you. Um, I don't know what he's going to be able to do. I, I think you can't say you have to sell your team. Uh, I think he can just kind of approach this like baseball did with Marge Shot and just slowly try to run this guy out and make his life as miserable as possible because, for me, he has no place in the NBA, and we got to get him out of this league. It's embarrassing and despicable what he said. What would you have done or suggested if you were a Clipper yesterday as a show of protest? You know, um, I, I'd have to be I, – I can't, I can't say what they did was right or wrong. It's, it's up to them. They're a group. It's, them, it's only, only them, and whatever they just chose to do, I, I, I'm behind them because – I don't know what I'd feel. Um, I thought this was going to really galvanize this group. I thought it would bring them together even more. So I was surprised with the outcome of yesterday's game. Uh, and it was like from the outset. I mean, they were done. And uh, obviously they were distracted. But, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I think what they did was fine. Uh, I was fine with it. They didn't want to have anything that said Clippers on them. That was, that was okay with me. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I, and I, I understand what you're saying, and I'm, I felt the same, like, in retrospect, what would I have done? The only thing I wanted to do is see the Warriors with the Clippers together. <laughs> that that this is this is us as a league, as African Americans. Uh, we're not well, you know, JJ Reddick, whoever. They're all in there together. It's the NBA here. This is this is your league, and that's one of your owners. I just wanted something maybe at center court that said we're all in this together. Yeah. I, I agree, and I think that's probably the only team that wouldn't have done it because of their past and uh, you know I, I i'm right with you because at the end of the day we are all together and as hard as we compete against one another and as much as everybody wants to win a championship at the end of the day yes there is a brotherhood of nba players and usually it happens after they're done playing when you're not competing against one another but in this instant instance I would have liked, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think they should have been out there as well. He's John Barry, ESPN NBA analyst, the uh, lead radio analyst for the Mothership, covering the NBA, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. It, it, you looked at the game yesterday. Now, I, I gave Golden State credit because obviously they were in desperation mode here, but they seemed to take it to the Clippers. Do you think this had any effect on the Clippers and how they played yesterday? I, I, I got to think some, um, but. Again, I, I, when, when teams beat other teams, you have to give them credit. I mean, Mark Jackson went to Draymond Green and went small and changed up the lineup, and, you know, Steph Curry was incredible in the first quarter. So, uh, I don't know. Only they know. And, I, I, obviously, there's some sort of distraction, and your mind can't be completely on basketball. But as Doc Rivers said, once the game starts, we're not thinking about Don and Sterling comments. We're thinking about basketball. So, let's just credit the Warriors and say they kicked their butt yesterday, and we'll move on to game five. Did you know about your owners when you played, like their backgrounds? Because they, I, the reason why I've gotten people who have tweeted to say, well, these guys knew what they were getting into. They took the paychecks from Donald Sterling. Is that fair to these players that they know the background of the owners? No, no. I, I knew the Maloofs because everybody knew the Maloofs because <laughs> yeah. they wanted to be Hollywood, you know. So, uh, no, I mean, I, these guys are younger. I mean, uh, we all know about Donald Sterling because we've been around the league for so many years. But, you know, to say, De to say DeAndre Jordan, who's not been in the league very long, knows the stories about Donald Sterling, I don't think so. And for me, it's like I, I said this on the air the other day, I, I, I really didn't think it would have an effect because, number one, you play for yourself and the pride of yourself. You play for your family. You play for your teammates. You play for your coaches. And some owners are closer than others. Obviously, Mark Cuban is two feet away from their bench, and he's there every day. 
And some owners you might not even see all year. So I really thought it was going to have no effect on this team, but and maybe it did. Biggest surprise so far in the first round is what? It's so hard. Um, I, I, maybe Dallas, I guess. I'm, <laughs> I'm stunned with Dallas. Yeah. To be up 2-1, and, and, and Vince Carter, there are people who said, I didn't know Vince Carter was still in the league. <laughs> John, I think he's he's 37. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, that, no, he's had a great year. I, I mean, know. He, he's really played well. What's well, like Sean Marion? People are like, "Oh, is that Sean Marion you used to play with the Phoenix Suns?" Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Doing guy. the same thing. Yeah, I mean, 15 years in doing it. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing in San Antonio. They junk up the game. They play kind of this amoeba zone defense at times, and uh, they're giving them problems. They lost nine in a row to this team coming in, and so I'm stunned. You also, uh, I, I think we're looking at parity here with the NBA. Aside from what the Wizards did to the Bulls. Uh, I mean, even that Portland-Houston series has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. Now, does that say more about what the Blazers are doing or what Houston isn't doing? Or are they, have they exposed a couple of these players with the Rockets? Well, I, I think they're very similar teams. Uh, I think defensively, uh, not, uh, you know, not championship-level quality defensive teams. So they're very similar. So that's why we've seen the games that we've seen. I believe, are they three overtime games as well? Um not great defensively. And so you get good back. I mean, I love watching their games. I mean, you know you're going to be in the hundreds. It's going to be great offense. I mean, Damian Lillard, I just love this guy, the way Aldridge has played. Uh, I think it was a perfect matchup for both of those teams because I don't think I would have picked them to beat any other team in the Western Conference. Uh, James Harden, I know he had a, a better game last night, but, you know, we got to playoff time. There's certain guys that at certain moments where you're going, where are you? Mm -hmm. um, is this a fair criticism of James Harden? Well, NBA Finals, you go back a couple years ago, yeah. uh, we were asking that question. Uh, he he was awful in that series. He was great prior to that. Um, again, he, he, I guess you could credit you know Nick Batum and Wesley Matthews done a nice job on him. I mean, he took 35 shots <laughs> two games ago and made 13. Uh, really struggling on the offensive end, as you said, better last night. And uh, he's not going to get any defensive of the year uh, player award <laughs> votes, I don't think, anytime soon. <laughs> if the Pacers advance, finish that sentence. Uh, they'll go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Look, I said this. I, I just Atlanta's a bad matchup for them. I think they're. I think they're closer to getting back to where they were than most people are giving them credit for because they've been so awful. Let's just say that. Yeah, I don't know I, the whole Roy Hibbert thing. I mean, I, th I thought that if they, if they all play well and know their roles, they're a dangerous team. I don't like their point guard. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, Hibbert's checking out of games. Um, and now you just see sort of those cracks in the armor here. And that's when you really define a team. But you believe that if they move past Atlanta, they'll go to the, they'll face Miami for the yeah, Eastern Conference? I do. Well, they're going to play Washington. I, I think they'll beat Washington. And, yeah, I think they're going to get there. And – it, it, it could take one play that turns this thing around. And I thought it was when Paul George made a three at the end of game two at the buzzer to really kind of put that game away against Atlanta. They all came out on the floor and celebrated. And I hadn't seen that from that group in a long time because it's clearly an, an internal issue of this team. I mean, we could nitpick their team. Yeah, you know, George Hill's at a disadvantage pretty much every night he goes up against point guards. Uh, Roy Hibbert not playing well. But this is an internal issue. And I thought it looked like they really came together and it could be just one play that, that, that does. It turns this thing around for them. Uh, your next game is when? I'm not sure. I, I have to wait on game sixes. So I was very, uh, <laughs> very rocket-heavy last night. I needed them to win, so I assured a game six. Uh, but more than likely, I'll be Toronto, Brooklyn. How about that series? I mean, oh, all hats off to Toronto. I, I mean, couldn't they, watch it, John. Yeah, it's different. Basketball. I had a hard time watching it. Yeah. And, and I, I actually liked Toronto during the year. I thought that they had some emerging stars. But, man. It was you almost had that amount of you know that point total in the first half for Golden State. You know yeah. when you're watching, going, come on, guys, yeah. please. It's a little different animal there in the East, but credit Toronto for winning a slow down game. They want to get it up and down with their athleticism, but kind of beat Brooklyn at their own game. Good to visit with you as always, Johnny. Thank you for coming on. Awesome, Dan. Good to talk to you. All right, that's John Barry, uh, ESPN NBA analyst, also the lead analyst for uh, the Mothership on radio. Always good to have him on.